Say, God is good. good. Now, we're going to go more and deeper into the things of the covenant. I want to tell you something before we get into the word of God tonight. That this day, there's going to be a change in the level at which this church has walked. God's going to step you up if you want. And whoever's willing to go up to a higher level, a newer dimension, a deeper walk, a greater walk. To see the goodness, the greatness, and the glory of God. Now, if you're ready for it, shout amen. Amen. Now, I'm going to tell you one thing flat. Either way, you're going to get blessed, but you're going to choose the way you want to be blessed. There's a greater blessing, and there's a blessing. (laughs) What do you want? I thought so. I shared with you, and I gave you a prophetic word. I said to you, God's going to step us up to another level. Say it with me, God's going to step us up. You see, before you go up in another level, you have to understand something. How many of you know that when you go to school, they take you up level by level? If you do not learn what they teach you in the third standard, don't expect to go to the fourth. Normally. You've been to school, right? Come on. You've been to school or you know somebody's gone to school. In the school of the spirit too, there is a learning. There is a progression. There is a going up. So I want to tell you today that God's going to teach you something new. And when you learn what you're going to learn today, and you're going to do what you learn today, you are going to go up. Turn to somebody and say, I'm going to go up. Now I'm not sending you off to... Come on. You ready? Turn with me to the book of Genesis 17. We're going on. and we, We're still on the same topic of covenant. Understanding God's covenant. How to partake. And you're going to learn the, the, what it's going to take to be a partaker of the covenant. Amen. Genesis 17. Fifteen to twenty-one. Now I'm going to give you some lot of facts, figures, and findings from the Word of God. You'll have to keep focused. Uh, you'll have to pay attention. You you need to understand things so that will change your understanding, and then you'll learn what you're learning, and you will progress. Amen. Amen. And God said unto Abraham, you can read it with me. And God said unto Abraham, As for Sarai thy wife. Thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall her name be. And I will bless her, and I will give thee a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. Then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed. Say, Abraham laughed. Abraham laughed. Say, Abraham laughed. Abraham laughed. And said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old? And shall Sarah, that is ninety years old, bear? And mind you, Sarah had already entered menopause. It's, it's stated in the word of God. And so, you know, how do you think this thing's going to happen, God? You know? And, uh, and Abraham says unto God, Oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. Come on, read it. Oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. And God said, Sarah, thy wife, shall bear thee a son in thee. And thou shalt call his name Isaac. And I will establish my covenant with him. For an everlasting covenant with his seed after him. And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him. And I will make him fruitful. And will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget. And I will make him a great nation. Now say, but. Say, but. But. My covenant 
will I establish with Isaac, which Sarah shall bear unto thee at this set time next year. Say, Sarah, Sarah is going to bear a child next year, this time, and it's set. Okay? Now, I want to talk to you. Abraham here is 99. Say 99. His son Ishmael is 13. At this particular scenario. Now here's a time when God tells Abraham, I want you to circumcise yourself. Circumcise Ishmael. Every male in the family kind of thing on the setup, you get them circumcised. I'm going to establish my covenant with you. And next year, this time, you know, Sarah's going to have a baby. And Abraham says, <laughs> I'm like many of us, some of the things you hear. <laughs> But good news is God was gracious to Abraham. When God knew how to work with people. He didn't say, you know, go to hell now. <laughs> how many have done so much for you? And now, you know, what are you telling me? You're laughing at me? Say, God's good. God is good. And uh, now I want to share with you something is, see there's two things. Abraham says, all that Ishmael might live before you God. God said, listen, I'll bless Ishmael. I'll be good to Ishmael. I'll prosper Ishmael. But, my covenant, say my covenant. My agreement. What I'm going to do, I'm going to do it with Isaac, which Sarah will bear. Now, don't you think it's such a strange thing? You know, God should say, listen, Abraham says, man, this is good enough, man. Let's just do it this way. You know, I've given up. You know, my wife's way beyond time. It's not possible. You know, there no record of it ever happening. Come on. And, you know, you're talking about having a child. You know, let's just go on with it. You know, let's get on with it, God. But God said, no, 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 no. That guy will prosper and all that. But my covenant is going to be with Isaac. Have you ever wondered why? Do you want to know why? See, the word Ishmael means God hears. Isaac means Laughter. I'm going to establish my covenant with laughter. Not just God hears, but with laughter. How many of you know the verse that says, The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich, adds no sorrow. What is the opposite of sorrow? Gladness, joy, laughter. I'll establish my agreement. I mean, could you like the liver? I mean, look at Abraham. You know, that good age, he's laughing. Later on, I'll show you, Sarah also laughs. And they end up calling their child laughter. So every day of their life, they say, laughter! <laughs> I'm sure they had a good laugh. I mean, think of, man, how dumb could I be? But God, I doubted you at that time. I never thought. But when it all manifested and everything happened and every time they called, laughter! <laughs> you know? You want to laugh? And feel good about your laugh? And laugh long and la loudest and last? Come on! Yes. Okay, let me show you. I want to show you the difference between Ishmael and I want to show you the difference between Isaac. Why God established his covenant with Isaac and not with Ishmael. 
You ready? Genesis 16, 11. <clears throat> now both of these people, Hagar and Sarah, have been impregnated by the same person, Abraham. Yes? Now, you can get impregnated by the same word. Same source. But the fruit of your impregnation, we want to see how the whole thing is going to come about. Is it going to be like an Ishmael? Or is it going to be like an Isaac? And I'll show you what I'm getting to towards the end. You'll get it. Okay. Now, Genesis 16, 11, it says, And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Can we go back? No, let's, let's look at the Genesis 21, 17 first. Genesis 21, 17. When you're there, say, I'm ready. Genesis 21, 17. And God heard the voice of the lad. Say, God heard the voice of the lad. And the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven and said unto her, What aileth thee, Hagar? Fear not. For God had heard the voice of the lad. Where he is. Say the voice of the lad. He cried out. He was nearly dying and the mother had left him behind a bush to die quietly. While the mother turned her face, she didn't want to see the lad die. How old do you think this boy was? Lad, how old? One, two, five, six, eight, four, one. See, 13 was the time he was circumcised. I showed you that. One year later, was, the, was Isaac born. That means the boys. And the Bible says that Isaac was weaned. And when the day he was weaned, that means finished being breastfed, when that had happened, Abraham threw a party. When Abraham was throwing a party, Ishmael started mocking Isaac. You know, hey, hey, what the big celebration about? You're having a good time. Hey, hey, I was bigger than you. I'm older than you. I'm better than you. I'm smarter than you. And Sarah didn't like it. And said, this thing goes out. Along with that thing. And God tells Abraham, do it. <laughs> this and that both have to go. I mean, if you don't know the story, you wonder what we're talking about this and that. It was Hagar and Ishmael. So they got to go. Now, at that age, in that time, they said the weaning process was when a baby in those days was five years old is when the baby was weaned. So 14 plus five, so approximately 19. Approximately 19. I mean, you could go, you know, you know, we can, you can say if it was three years old, 70. But somewhere, around 19, I would say. Could have been a little older, whatever. You hearing me? Now, now I'm bringing you deductions with the best knowledge available. Now, for example, if you find it somewhere in the Guinness Book of World Records or Britannia Encyclopedia that it was 18 years and 7 days, don't argue. <laughs> Just be happy. But he was somewhere way beyond 15. Get it? Okay. So I would say around 19 is where the age was according to what we have understanding. Now, at 19 years of age, all you see this boy do, and now listen carefully, don't get distracted, you know. At 19 years of age, what you see is a 19-year-old boy, all he seems to know is to mock a 5-year-old boy. Huh? Yes? And then you see a 19-year-old boy when he goes through a hard time, all he knows is to lie down, cry. Before he was going to die. Come on. 
Not a four-year-old kid, 19. You'll know why we're getting there a little soon. Okay? Then you see another thing in Genesis 16. 11 and 12. Because I want to bring you into that level where you don't walk as Ishmael's. But you walk like Isaac's. Men and women who have the covenant. Not just blessing. I mean, is that okay with you? Some of you at least. All of you? Yes. Come on. Yes. Our louder yes. Yes. Thank you. That was convincing. There's a difference. Now, 16, 11 to 12. And the angel of the Lord said unto her. Now this is to Hagar. Behold thou art with child, and thou shalt bear a son, and thou shalt call his name Ishmael, because the Lord hath heard thy affliction. Okay? You're going to call your son Ishmael because the Lord has heard. Ishmael means the Lord has heard. Many people are happy with a relationship with God. As long as, you know, they have a small request, small problem. God, God hears, very happy. Very happy. But I want to tell you there's something beyond. Amen. You want that. Yes. You really want that. Yes. And God has heard. But he says, woman, listen. He says, now this is the first time. The second time. We, we read about that when, when Isaac was, I'm sorry, Ishmael was dying and he's crying and God hears and intervenes. But, but listen to this. And there's a promise that is spoken to him. He said, and he will be a wild man. See, wild man. His hand will be against every man. And every man's hand against him. And he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. So Ishmael is going to be a fighter. He's going to be a guy who keeps battling, warring. Now, Ishmael was the product of Sarah's brainwave. She had a brainwave, said, God has to do it, it must be like this. From human intellect, Isaac was a result of faith. Now, many of us sometimes use our brain and our great brain tells us if God will do it, it must be like this. And because of that, we end up becoming fighters. We learn to try, we strive, we fight. Oh, if we can get it, I must get it, I must get it first. Oh, he got it. Ah, uh, competition, no? But none happened here, I know. To make you feel a little better. <laughs> but that Ishmael kind of a nature. It's that striving, I want to get it. He can get blessed, I can get blessed. But she got blessed a different way. You better understand how she got blessed if you want to get the blessed the same way. Otherwise, the result would be, your nature would be like this. You know, when God has to do a miracle, he has to get you to the point where you're dead and you can't fight back. And you know that it's God's mercy that saves you. Now, on the other hand, you see another man called Isaac. It's Isaac. Isaac. You see, when he was older, the Bible says, let me take you there and we'll compare. Genesis 22. Six to eight. Are we there? Are we there? And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac, his son. And he took the fire in his hand 
and a knife. And they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father. And said, my father. And he said, here am I, my son. And he said, behold the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, my son. God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. How old do you think Isaac was? You don't want to say anything, huh? You're scared when I ask questions. Ah, hey, come on, I mean, I mean, I mean, maybe you don't want to get embarrassed. Maybe you, you know, some, you know, I've thought some time back, maybe you're four, five, six, seven, something, something, somewhere, somewhere there, small little kid, you know, you know, you know. But I found out that this little kid that we've always thought is a little kid was able to carry the whole load of the wood for the burnt offering. How much do you think wood they use for the burnt offering? Matchsticks? <laughs> I mean, if you want to have a lamb as a burnt sacrifice, or a ram, you know, that's about that big. How much do you wood do you need to finish the whole thing? Quite a bit of wood. Man, you've not handled wood fires? I mean, have you ever seen one of those Hindu funerals where they burn? I mean, a lot of wood. I mean, make me happy. Now, Abraham is old. He's about a hundred and something. Okay? Ishmael is gone. And Ishmael was approximately 19. Abraham's quite old. He can't carry up the mountain with the wood. He says, son, you carry the wood. Who do you think is stronger? Young guy who can lift the load stronger than an old man? Uh-huh. Yeah. Then he says, okay, son. God's going to provide now. You lie on the wood and, and I'm going to tie you up. And the guy lies down. He doesn't fight with his father. He says, oh man, you know, I think you've been drinking again. <laughs> uh, I mean, something wrong. He didn't say anything. He just lay down, surrendered. No argument. You don't see a word. And if you look at the life of Isaac, a very silent life. A surrendered life. An yielded life. A trusting life. And all he had was a word his father said, God will provide the lamb. All he had. And he's lying there, knife to come down on his throat. He's going to trust his father. He's not got up to hit back, fight back. He's just resting there, trusting his father. And said, God will provide the lamb. Now that is the line from where Jesus came. Where he could trust his heavenly father. Because in this lineage there was a boy who could trust his earthly father. I don't know about your earthly father and all these relationships we have problems with today. But I'm talking about something that there was. That the boy could rest and trust. There you find a man struggling. There you find a man trying to war. There you find a man trying to make the things of God happen. And live like a warrior fighter. Oh, he gets it. I want to get it. I want to get it first. Here's a guy who surrenders, trusts. And you know what happens? Then is when the supernatural takes place. You see, God had to get Ishmael to a place where he couldn't fight back. You know, beat him up so badly. Then, you know, the only thing he can save is a miracle. And he's very happy. Oh, God, help me. I got a miracle. Thank you, Jesus. You want to go out like that? You want to get blessed like that? Or a willing choice? You lie down, surrender, trust. I might go through an affliction, but I'm coming out because God is in control. Yeah. You know, listen, listen. You know, the problem is the mother. You want to see good kids? Look at the mother. Very often. Mother is a big influence. Huh? Huh? That's why God you chose a woman to give birth to Jesus. Think about it. 
good woman, good mother. Why? I prove it to you. Look at this. Hey, let's go back. You're learning something. Yes. You're awfully quiet today. You're soaking it in the poop. Pulling it in. Yes. Eating it all. Yes. Changing the thought processes. Yes. Okay. Then we can change from Sarah to Sarah. Yes. We don't want to be Hagar. I'll tell you what the differences are. In a while. Let's go back. In 16. Uh, verse 11. Uh, thou shalt call his name Ishmael. We'll read from there. Okay? Because the Lord hath heard thy affliction. Say, the Lord hath heard thy affliction. Now, you know, understand this. Hagar, you got to understand the differences. Why Ishmael's become Ishmael's and Isaac's become Isaac's? Hagar was running from affliction. Little pain, run. Boss shouts, I need to change my job. Have a tough time at home? Why should I marry you? Run from affliction. And you run from affliction somewhere when an angel will catch you and say, hey, get back. Where are you going? Who do you think you're going? Get back. Behave. And some of you need to be caught like that. Go back. <laughs> you know, see, what happens is that Ishmael natures, you know what? When we have a trouble, we just want a relief from our trouble. We want some kind of a... We want, you know, oh God, hear my prayer. Please do something. But Sarah, on the other hand, went through her affliction. When she was in no child, everybody mocked her. You know what she was willing to do? Listen, the difference between... Hey, Garvin, Sarah. Sarah was willing, even if she made a mistake, okay? She might have made a mistake. But she said, you know what? One thing I've never given this woman, a handmaid, that woman was, you know who that, Hagar, handmaid had every right, you know, and every closeness to the woman of the house, except one area was the man of the house. She said, if the word of God is to come to pass, I have to sacrifice my this desire and my husband to her, I will let her have it just so the word of God will come to pass. She had a willingness to sacrifice anything. To save her husband from, you know, his fears of his death, she was willing, I'll go, you know, to Pharaoh's house, but I will not let you die. You see the nature of the woman. She was not perfect, but she had that willingness to sacrifice even to the point of her own hurt. But Hagar, little pain, <laughs> can't take any pain. Only God hear me, God hear me. And from that nature come out the natures of Ishmael. But from the nature that's willing to stand, the nature that's willing to sacrifice, the nature, the nature that's willing to hold on, Isaac is born. Now what is this Isaac and Ishmael got to do with us? Now who got both these guys, girls, these, these women? Who, got imp who was the one used to impregnate them? Same source. What was the difference? I mean, you had two sons, two different results, but was, what was the difference in between? Mother. Same mother. You see, you get the same word. The, the, the mother nature is your mind, your soul. And the way it will receive the word. And you will bring every bit of you into obedience of that word. Or you will do the smart thing. Hi, this is the thing. I'll do this. Smart thinking. You know? Oh, if I just do this, nobody will know about it. I'll do this way. I'll do that way. It's about our mind. Our crooked mind. Hagar is something that Abraham picked up when he went through Egypt. And sometimes we get that mindset because of our farage and in our wandering in the things of the world, we get some of the world's thinking. And we think the way of the world. 
But Sarah to Sarah is what you see the transformation where God says, I want you to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Let this mind be in you that was in Christ. Where you think like Abraham thinks. Did you know that Sarah had to think like Abraham thought? No? I'll show you. You know that Sarah had to get exactly like Abraham to get that baby? You're a miracle? Huh? Let me show you. Turn with me in your Bible. I said, you know, so you're going to change your nature. You know, you know, the way you think. You're going to be either going the way of Ishmael, going the way of Isaac. What do you want to choose? Covenant? Covenant? Come on. Some of you are scared. You said, what is this guy going to do? He's going to put me somewhere and tell me, knife. <laughs> Listen, whatever you go through, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God shall deliver them from them all. Amen. Not some, all. Yes. You might go through tough times, but if you belong to the kingdom of God, if you are willing to stick on, like how this woman stuck on, not run you to some source, alternate measure, but stay where you are, you're going to see the blessing come through. It's going to come through. It has to change. God will provide. Amen. How? I don't know. Don't see the rain. Don't hear the wind. But the ditch is full of water. How? God. If I could explain a miracle, it's not a miracle. Now Isaac was... I personally would believe. Now this is, you, you want something just to, to make your brains think more? I would personally think that Isaac was probably around the same age as probably Jesus was when he went there. 33 and a half. You know why I want to think, think that way? I said, you're entitled to your opinion. This, I'm not, this is not gospel. I'm just talking. If you want to you think he's nuts, you can, that's fine. I'm entitled to certain thoughts. You know why? You see, just before this incident of the sacrifice, you find that Abraham is making a deal with Abimelech. And he said, you're not going to bother me. You're not going to bother my son. You're not going to bother my grandson. I mean, if you, what do you mean? If you've got a kid that's about 10, you're not going to talk about your grandson. A long time coming. Huh? Then a little later, just after this incident, you see a point where Sarah dies and the Bible says she was 127 years old. So 127? When she had Isaac, she was 91. That means she, Isaac was probably 36 when Sarah died. So if that was somewhere, somewhere between all these figures, could be. I mean, probably, you know, God wanted to prove a point. You do that, I'll do it too. I mean, you got a barren woman to conceive, I'll get a virgin to conceive. Amen. I mean, I mean that's God. No? You, you, you know, faith, you know, you can do this. I can do this. I can still beat it. We like that. God will beat everything you thought. I mean, you thought so hard and you thought this is what God can do. And God says, I'll take it a little higher. Yes. Like yesterday, when we were standing in the land, they told me, we'll give you so many Swiss francs. And I thought, okay, you know, it's 100 Swiss francs per person. 100, 100, five of us, or 500. And he says, no, it's 500 per person. I said, wow. Beats it. 
exceedingly over abundantly than you think or even ask. It's a nice deal. Okay, let me see. Now I want to prove to you about Sarah, right? You, you with me still? Yes. How are we doing for time? 9 30? Okay. Okay. Now let me take you. First, I was talking about the mind of a man. And when you get the word, and Abraham being the one who sows the word kind of thing, and the word is being sent forth, and the way Hagar would receive it, and the way Sarah would receive it, and how that appropriation is what brings out the miracle, or whatever it is, and your character is shaped up either like an Ishmael or an Isaac. Okay? That's the comparison I was giving you. And you think of that. And, <clears throat> and I want you to see this, how Sarah, uh, 1 Peter 3.6 how does he are as long as you do well and are not afraid with any amazement? Say, Sarah obeyed. Sarah obeyed. See, Sarah had a characteristic about her obedience. You go down to Pharaoh. Okay. How could you? Why should I? No. Obedience. We need, uh, God's told me that we got to get circumcised. Just fine. You think, you know, Abraham just did it quietly without telling her? Good morning. We're going to do this here. She had her consent. She says, if God told you, that's fine. I agree. And when finally that time when she took, uh, you know, Isaac, when Abraham took Isaac for sacrifice, you think he took it behind his wife's back? You never thought about it, huh? Think. She would have had to give her consent every bit of the way. If he had to sacrifice Isaac over there on the altar and come back home, Abraham would have also been sacrificed. <laughs> come on. Think about it. Now she was obedient. Nature of Sarah, obedience. When you learn to train your mind to bring your being into obedience, and God says something, willing to do it. Now you see Abraham willing to do it, but you see Sarah willing to do it. See, your spirit man is willing, but your soul argues, why should I? Let's wake up in the morning to pray. You know how many in the here today, Lord, tomorrow morning I wake up to pray. And morning comes, your mind says, ah, only fools do that. Why should I? Let's sleep. Let us slumber. The folding of the hands. Those of you who read Proverbs know what I'm talking about. <laughs> huh? Okay. Nanda, I know you're not yet convinced with that. <clears throat> Go to Genesis 18. <clears throat> 12 to 15. I showed you a little earlier. The Bible says... I was, I think it was in Genesis uh, 16, 17. Yeah, Genesis 17. Genesis 17 where we read in the beginning. Now we're looking at Genesis 18, 12 to 15. Now read this. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself saying, After I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure? My Lord being old also. The Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of a surety bear a child which am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee, according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Then Sarah denied, saying, I laugh not, for she was afraid. And he said, Nay, but thou didst laugh. Now look at Sarah. I mean, she's actually the laugh is not laugh. It was a scorn. She's like, <laughs> she was behind a tent and you know, nobody was watching. So nobody's watching. Nobody often we think nobody's watching. I didn't try. No, not on me. Not on me. I like that each my nature. No, come to fight. No, 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 not me. Prove a point. Come to fight. Me? Cut you with the neck. No, 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 no. No, you laugh. 
laughed. I know it. You laughed. But you know what? God never went to argue with Sarah about it. He never asked Sarah, why did you laugh? He asked Abraham, Abraham, why did Sarah laugh? Husbands, you're responsible for your spiritual growth of your wife. Why? Abraham, you are my friend. I will not, not tell you anything. I'll tell you everything before I do it, Abraham. Because I know you will instruct your family, your household in the things of me, Abraham. That means Abraham, Sarah is laughing. She does not have the faith. I dealt with you, you were laughing. Now your faith is more strong. But she's not got the faith you've got. She's laughing. I'm asking you to get her into ship shape so she believes the same thing you believe. And then we have the miracle. You get me? It's the same way. A soul, you know, a mind, a brilliance, a great educated brain. How can God do this? Hey, hey. But we clap and we sing the same songs, we dance the same tune, and hallelujah. And God's asking you, man, let the word. Like Abraham is impregnating, let a word change that mind from Sarah to a Sarah. Change the way you think. Why is the mind of yours still questioning, asking, mocking, scorning, ridiculing, doubting? There has to come a time where you are transformed by the renewing of your mind. That this mind that was in Christ would be in you. Why is that thing there, Abraham? Why is Sarah laughing? Why is that mindset of yours where I want to do something for you which has never been done? Where eye has not seen and ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man. Those things that I have for my people. But here we have a situation, Abraham. Sarah is laughing. Do something about it. The good thing is that Abraham did something about it. He took his wife up to that level. How do you know? Believe me. It's in the Bible. You want to see it? No, we're close for the time. <laughs> Let's go. Hebrews, Hebrews 11, 11. <clears throat> you there? Say through faith. Also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised it she said God who said it is faithful whose faith uh -huh. what is it whose faith whose faith why did Sarah laugh? She had no faith. Now what happened here? A laugh from mockery changed to laughter of joy. Because no long you can have Ishmael's out of the intellect of man's mind. You might see some prosperity, some blessing, some kind of stuff that happens, but there is no productivity, which is long term, where you don't even stay with your father, you're away, you're like a warrior living like a wild man, not tamed. But when Isaac remained in his father's house, inherited everything that his father had, uh -huh. he had the nature of knowing how to rest and receive the greatness of God. 
And you see one more thing. Go and read it. Nothing much is written about Isaac. But God said, I'm the God of. Uh huh. Why? You see, one thing you see, one great thing about Isaac. And these are the things I believe that Abraham taught him. And even in those times of his dire testings. Because as much as God tested Abraham, Isaac was tested too. Come on. Change the way you think. You know what? When before Isaac got his wife, and they were bringing his wife, Eliezer is bringing his wife to him from a far off land. You see Isaac in a field, and the Bible says he was meditating. He was not doing... He was meditating on the promises that his father had received, obviously, from God. The power he know in quietness is your strength in rest. He was able to pull down the blessings of God. It's not the show you put on. You can oh, prove a point, fight, fight, fight. Kind of be an Ishmael kind of a character. But you want to see the blessing where God said, I'm going to establish with people who trust me, rest in me, you know, give themselves, resign into my hands. Those are the people I'm going to establish a covenant. And that's what God's going to do in us. Amen. Come on. Yes. Did you learn something today? Yes. So you want to go on the way of Ishmael? Or you want to go on the way of Isaac? So don't do what Hagar did. Affliction may come. Don't run. Relax. Trust God. He's going to come through for you. Amen. Wherever. Whenever. But he will come through. Surely come through. I don't need to fear anything, anyone. Come on. Say, common people say, God is with me. God will come through. It's not by my might. It's not by my power. It's not by my brilliance. It's not by my ability. But it's the grace of God. And I want you to check yourself openly. We be own judge. You know, I, I think you'll know exactly where you'll fit in and how this world will apply to you. How do you deal with situations? You deal it like Isaac. You deal it like Ishmael. You want to mock the people of promise, inside scorn and that ridicule, run from affliction. It shows you how much you've matured, how much you've progressed. Gauge yourself and make changes today, decisions today that will change things forever. Shall we stand up in the presence of God? Right? Never learn to surrender. Never learn to trust. Never learn to give up and rest. And see the great salvation of God. But today you know. God has taught you. The better way. The greater way. And I want today you people here. To make a choice in the presence of God as under the instructions of the Spirit of God. But you want to say openly, say, I've lived many times like an Ishmael, I've been living like this, I've been satisfied with this, but I want that covenant walk with God. I don't want to be an Ishmael anymore. I want to walk into this today, God. I want to live by my own ability and my ways. I want to rest. Trust, surrender, and see you as my God. You want to make that choice today. I don't want to be an Ishmael anymore. I want to be an Isaac. I want you to make that choice today. I want you to first lift up your hand in the presence of God. And then I want you to come forward as much as you can. As close as you can. Get no compassion. You know what you're making a call. Say, God forgive me. I've lived sneering others. Scorn in my heart. Whatever it is. I mock the people of promise. Sometimes it's that nature. People who gave you, taught you, gave you an opportunity. You've despised them because you seem to see some fruitfulness. Short term results. Not long term results. Being weighed right now by the Spirit of God. Who is the judge of all. I want you to talk to the Lord. Tell Him the things He's convicting you of. Things you want to say sorry. Things you want to repent.
Some of you want to cry out. Some of you want to kneel down. Some of you want to weep. Just go ahead and do what you want to do in the presence of God. God is here to heal. God is here to touch. God is here to deliver. God is here to bring a change and break you into walk into a new way. A new way. A better way. In your middle of your wilderness, in the middle of wherever you are, God is here. Make your choice. Don't be bothered about who's standing next to you, who's with you, who's without you. Just make your choice to cry out to God. It's your time, personal time. Holy Spirit. It's your cry. It's your heart. It's your prayer. How serious you are. Weak, Lord. Help me. I need to change, Lord. Tell me. I have laughed like Abraham. I have laughed like Sarah. I've done all that forever. But God, I want to change from Sarah to Sarah. I want that faith to bring some, the power of God down. Come to put perfect agreement with you. Help me. Your ways are better than my ways. Your ways are higher than my ways. Your thoughts are higher than my thoughts. Help me, God. Help me, God. I thought I'd all figured it out. I thought I had it all. I thought I thought this is the way. I thought I was smart. I thought I was intellectual. I thought I was brilliant. I thought I was a genius, God. But I realize I'm really a fool, God. I just realized, and that's why I laughter. I can laugh at myself one day, God, because you're going to bring in your covenant, your covenant. You're preparing me for that, Lord, which you have for me, which is mine in Christ, which is mine in Abraham. Help me, God. Help me, God. Here I am. Make that your cry. Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. the spirit a bit together and even as you don't know how to pray, what to pray at time, just pray in the Holy Ghost. Let's just pray in the Holy Ghost. Take Nature, the inferiority. 
You act like a, a servant and not a son, not a daughter. Servant attitude, inferiority. I don't call you servants, I call you friends. Jesus said, Come into the joint, hey, airship with Christ. But he picked up that nature, Hagar's nature from Egypt, servant mentality, inferiority. Change only through the word. Obedience. And Sarah obeyed. As even Abraham led her into the things of faith. Changed her. Willing to give in to what God was speaking. Here you change. You run the Hagar from afflictions. Seeing temporary relief and provisions, but go back to the point where you left from. And it keeps happening again. And the cycle repeats in your life. And again, and you cry out, and God delivers. And you go back to that same point. You say, Lord, why does this keep happening again? God wants to deal with that nature. I know there are many here like that. Seeing something like a cycle come back in your life. Come back to the same point. You've been running, running, running. From your affliction. God wants to deal with that thing. Once and for all. Change. I want you to pray with me and say, Lord, help me. I'm weak. I need your help. Holy Spirit, you're given to help me. And I want your help. I cannot change. Because the Bible says, a leopard cannot change his parts. I cannot change unless you change me. And I want to be changed by you. I want to be transformed. I want that mind that was in Christ. So help me. I want to change you. I want to get rid of the Hagar. I want to get rid of Ishmael. I just I want to go away just from temporary relief. But I want to walk in the covenant. I want to be part of the covenant. I want that in my life. Nothing less. Holy Spirit. Help me right now. I give you my heart. I give you my mind. I give you my body in surrender. Forgive me of my wickedness. Forgive me of my foolishness. Forgive me of my selfishness and that nature which is not of you. And Lord, forgive me for doubt and unbelief. But I will rise up and be all that you want me to be. Your grace is sufficient for me. By faith I receive it now. And I give myself to the word of God. I will give myself unto prayer. This will be my priority. I will meditate on the word. I will learn from you. I want to walk in your covenant blessing. All the days of my life. In Jesus name. I thank you. Trust you. And say amen. 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 Today. As many as you have cried out from your hearts and children. You started a new walk. We're going to go deeper. I wish I could tell you when we did this. But I know God's going to build it. Step by step. To take you to where you need to go. And you will be champions. Ah. Men or women. You, you, you watch. You, you see things differently. Man. I mean, no longer. I mean, you know, that, that guy went out, he didn't no clue. But this boy, Isaac, understood the things of the promise. You know, many of us have lived in the Christian world and no clue. But when God, when we get serious with God, you know what? 
with mysteries come out. We are taught. We instructed. We rise up because the level changes. What I learned in second step was last year. Now I'm in third, fourth, fifth. I go higher, higher, higher. I get my PhD and my PhD is this. I go higher every day learning with God. So he will teach us. He will lead us. We may all make mistakes. Hey, there might be some of us like Sarah now. Hey, Abraham now. But you know what? God doesn't give up when you're serious. God sees the heart. Sincerity. And say, hey, I'll pick you up. I'll make you walk. And I will show you because I'm going to establish. I will rise up to establish my covenant. When you fail, I will fill it. Hey, what a ability. When we believe we just started. This is just the foundation. Now, build, build, and finally when God puts the icing on the cake, 